guys, here we go into lesson 14. Uh, we are continuing to divide. Um, we're not going to do kind of that fancy work that we did today. We're going to look um, at these division expressions in a more concrete way. Uh, we are all roads lead to the standard algorithm. We are going to begin working with the sta standard algorithm today for long division, uh, and but we're not going to do that exclusively. What we're going to do is connect the standard algorithm to modeling. So we're really going to do um, modeling of long division alongside the standard algorithm, and we're going to make the connection so that so that we're not just being zombies and just going through the standard long division algorithm. We're going to be thoughtful wide awake mathematicians and think about hmm what does this really mean so here's an opportunity to deepen your um, your number sense and your reasoning when it comes to to division this is a very um, powerful lesson and I think hopefully a lot of you will look at long division in a new way and um, let's take a look at this so here we go guys uh, we are in lesson 14 um, and we are going to be doing the standard algorithm alongside modeling. Are we going to model every single problem for the rest of our lives? No. But this modeling is an awesome way for us to really understand this process. And this is indeed a process. It's complicated. There's a lot of moving parts. We're going to slow it down and we're going to model exactly what's happening each step of the way. Uh, the purpose of this is to give you a better understanding of long division as a whole. So let's check this out. We're looking at 1.324 or 1 in 324 thousandths divided by 2. It is so important that we set up the uh, problems the correct way. 1 in 324 thousandths is being divided by 2. This number is being divided by this number. Whatever is being divided lives inside this little house of division. Okay, so please pay special attention to that. First, we're going to model 1 and 324 thousandths on our place value chart. And modeling is not writing the digits, it's actually showing how many of each place value we have. So we have 1, 3 ten, 1, 1, 3 tenths, 2 hundredths, and then we have 4 thousandths. This, um, this place value chart is actually set up for us. We're dividing by two. That's why we have one, two equal sections. So we are going to go ahead and take a look at our first column. We're going to think, hmm, I have one. I need to split it into two equal groups. Well, I can't do that. So what we're actually going to do, you guys, is we're going to cash in our one, one, four, 10 tenths. Doot, there's that 2, 4, 6, 8. Because you guys know, oops, I went too far. You guys know that 1, 1 is equal to 10 tenths. I can't split, I can't crack 1 and 2. <laughs> two parts. So I'm just going to move it over and I'm going to cash in my 1, 1 for 10 tenths. <laughs> Let's look at that here. First, we're going to look at how many 2s go into one. Well, no twos go into one. That's that's not a thing. Just like we didn't put anything in our two equal groups in our ones column. Let's continue the traditional algorithm. We have zero times two is zero. The difference between one and zero is one. What we had left was our one one. We're going to bring our three down what we actually have right now, you guys, are 13 tenths. Just like over here, we have 13 tenths. What we need to do now is to spread our 13 tenths evenly across two groups, and we are going to have some left over. 13 tenths spread evenly across two groups is going to result, is going to look like this. We're going to have six there, and we're going to have six here. So I've used 12 tenths. Let's go ahead and cross out what we've used. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We've used 12 tenths, and now we have one left over. We're going to cash in this one tenth, and we're going to move it move it next door. Anything that we have left, we're just going to move next door. So we're going to cash in our one tenth for 
one out of ten hundredths. One tenth is equal to ten hundredths. Two, four, six, eight, ten. It is no longer a tenth. It is now ten hundredths. Okay. So then let's go over here and think about uh, what the stand, what it looks like in the standard algorithm. So now we, we had thirteen left over. What? Um, so now we're looking at how many twos go into thirteen. How many twos go into thirteen? Well, six. Just like we had six in each of these uh, two groups. Now we do think about six times two. Six times two is twelve. We used twelve tenths in these two equal groups. And now we're going to look at the difference between 13 and 12. The difference between 13 and 12 is 1. Just like we had 1 tenth left over before we moved it over to hundredths. Pretty cool stuff. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drop our 2 down. And now we're going to think about the fact that we have 12 hundredths. We have 12 hundredths that we're working with now. Just like over here in our model. We have 10, 11, 12 hundredths. What we're looking to do is spread these 12 hundredths evenly across two groups. So let's go ahead and do that. 12 hundredths spread evenly across two groups is going to look like 6 hundredths in each group. 6 and 6. So what we've actually done is we've used 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You've used 12 hundredths. Okay, let's connect this to the standard algorithm. How many twos go into 12? Well, six twos go into 12. In turn, six times two is 12. What is the difference between when we take 12 from 12? It is zero. We had zero left in our hundredths place value. <laughs> We're going to go next door next, just like we're going to bring down our four, and we're going to look at four thousandths. Now we have one, two, three, four thousandths left. We need to spread our four thousandths evenly across one, two groups, because we're dividing again by two. We're dividing again by two. When we spread four thousandths evenly across two groups, we end up with four, two thousandths in each group. So we've used one, two, three, four. We've used all four of those thousands. Let's look and see what that looks like in our traditional algorithm. So we have four thousands. We're going to spread those evenly across two groups. Four divided by two is two, just like we have here, one, two. Now we do two times two, which is four. That's counting up the amount of thousands that we spread across our two groups here. And now we're going to look for the difference. Our difference is zero. Just the same here. We have nothing left in our thousandths category. So we have nothing left. We are all good. Our final answer here is 662 thousandths. Okay, kiddos, we are going to take a look at another problem here where we are uh, modeling the problem and also connecting it with the standard algorithm. So here we're looking at 5 and 241 thousandths divided by 3. We're going to model, and then as you can see, this is already set up for us to uh, divide each of these place values into three equal groups. Here, uh, the problem, the traditional algorithm is set up for us 5 and 241 thousandths divided by 3. So let's go ahead and start with modeling um, each of our place values. So we have five ones, we have one, two tenths, we have one, two, three, four hundredths, and then we have one thousandth. So let's look at each place value one at a time and divide what we have into three equal groups, keeping in mind we're probably going to have some leftover. So we have five ones, we want to share those five ones across three equal groups. So I've used one, two, three ones, and it looks like I'm going to have two left over, which we are going to bring next door. Okay, so let's connect that with our standard algorithm. Five spread equally into three groups. We're going to have one in each group, just like we have one, one, one. One times three is three just like we used one, two, three across our three groups. 
and then when we find the difference, 5 minus 3 is 2, just like we had two ones left over. We're going to bring our two ones, uh, two ones next to her, and we're going to cash in our two ones for 20 tenths. Two, four, six, eight. Because you guys know that one one is equal to 10 tenths. If we have two ones left over, that means we're going to have 20 tenths. Two, two, ten, uh, 20 tenths now instead of two ones. So they're no longer two ones, now they're 20 tenths. Let's look over here and see what's going on. We're going to bring down our two and exactly that. Now we have 22 tenths that we're working with exactly as we do in our model. We have 10, 20, 1, 22 tenths. So now we are going to share our 22 tenths evenly across three groups with some left over. Well, when we do that, we are going to have seven in each of our three groups. We are going to have three groups of seven with some left over. Okay, so I have seven, 14, 21. I've used 21 tenths, so that means I've used these 10, I've used these 10, and then I've used this one with one left over. So I put seven in each of my three groups, cross those out, and now I have one left over. You guys are probably already predicting that we're going to move that one. Um, we are going to transfer our tenth over into hundredths land. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's uh, connect this to our standard algorithm. We have 22 tenths. We had 22 tenths. We spread them evenly across three groups. One, two, three. Inside of each of our groups, we have seven tenths. Don't forget to move your decimal place up. Now we have 7 times 3, which is 21, which means we used 7, 14, 21 tenths when we spread them evenly. The difference between 22 and 21 is 1. Same here, we had 1 tenth left over, so we're moving that over to hundredths. We are going to cash in our 1 tenth for 10 hundredths. It is no longer a tenth, it is now 10 hundredths. Not forget to bring our 4 down. So now what we're looking at in our standard, standard algorithm is that we have 14 hundredths. Same here, we have 14 hundredths. Now what we're tasked with is that we need to share our 14 hundredths evenly across 1, 2, 3 groups because we're dividing by 3. When we share 14 hundredths across 3 groups, we're going to end up with 4 hundredths in each group and we're going to have some left over. So I put four hundredths across three groups. That means that I've used twelve hundredths. So let's cross out these ten and I'm going to cross out eleven, twelve, which means we have two hundredths left over and you guys know that we're going to bring that next door and cash those in. Let's connect that with the standard algorithm first. So we had 14 hundredths. We started with 14 hundredths right here. We're sharing them evenly across three groups. Yep, I remember that. One, two, three. We ended up with four in each group. Uh-huh. One, two, three, four. And then what we ended up doing, let's think about four times three is twelve. What we ended up doing was using four, eight, twelve hundredths. Twelve hundredths. Now find the difference between fourteen and twelve. We have two left over. Yes, we have two hundredths left over. Beautiful. So we're going to bring those hundredths the next door and we're going to cash those two hundredths in for twenty thousandths. One hundredth is worth is equal to ten thousandths. So if we have two hundredths left over, that means, sorry, this is getting a little sloppy. That means that we have, we have two hundredths left over. That means that we have 20, we can cash them in for 20 thousandths. So two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Beautiful. So let's go ahead and bring our one down. Now we're looking at 21 thousandths. Beautiful. 21 thousandths. Now we need to share those 21 thousandths evenly across three groups. Okay. When I share 21 thousandths evenly across three groups, we again are going to have seven in each group. So you can see me sharing those 21 thousandths evenly across three groups. 
I use seven, 14, 21 thousandths altogether, which means I've used all these, I've used all these, and I've used this one, so I don't have anything left over. Let's make sure that our traditional algorithm matches that. Okay, so we have 21 thousandths, great, we started with 21 thousandths, spread evenly across three groups, right, one, two, three. Inside each of those three groups, we had seven thousandths. Across the three groups altogether, seven times three, sorry, this is getting teeny, we used 21 thousandths. And then the difference between 21, uh, when I take 21 from 21, is zero. Perfect, because I have zero thousandths left. Very cool stuff here, you guys. Okay, kiddos, we're going to take a look at one more problem here. Uh, this is a word problem, pretty straightforward. Uh, Mrs. Mayuko paid $40.68 for three kilograms of shrimp. What's the cost of one kilogram of shrimp? So as we're working on these word problems, don't forget to RDW, read, done. Drawing is important because it just gives you a snapshot of exactly what's happening in the problem. I'm going to draw a rectangle that represents 40, 68. This whole rectangle represents $40.68. That is the cost for one, two, three pounds of shrimp. We want to know, pretend like these are three equal pieces. We want to know what is the cost of one pound of shrimp. These are three equal pieces. So instead of, um, no, I shouldn't say instead of, just consider the fact that 40, 68 is being divided evenly across three equal spaces. I smell a long division problem. Make sure when you're setting up your long division problem, you are setting it up correctly. We have 40, 68 being divided by 3. Okay, now let's just do the long division. We're not going to model on the place value chart like we did with the previous problems. We're just going to go ahead and do the standard algorithm. So first let's ask ourselves how many 3's go in 4? Well, 1 3 goes in 4 into 4. Um, and let's carry on. We have 1 times 3 is 3. Make sure everything is lined up perfectly. If you're wobbly with your numbers, this is all going to become a big fat mess. And we don't want a big fat mess in long division. Speaking of which, big fat mess is our secret word. Do not let your long division problem become a big fat mess. That will be confusing for your big brain. Make sure you are neat and tidy and everything is lined up. Again, secret word, big fat mess. And again, that's not what we want in long division. Four minus three is one. Here we need to do a little check and we want to make sure that this number is smaller than this number. Is one smaller than three? Yep. Carry on. Great, so we're going to go ahead and bring down our zero. And now we have 10. How many threes go into 10 with some left over? Well, three threes can fit into 10 with some left over. Uh, now we're going to do 3 times 3, which is 9. I'm still nice and lined up here. Let's find the difference between 10 and 9. That is 1. Is this number smaller than this number? Yep. Carry on. If this number was not smaller than this number, then we would have to go back and review our work. But it looks like we're in good shape so far, so let's bring down our 6. Now we have 16 tenths, if you look at your place value. If we were to divide 16 tenths into three equal groups, what would we have approximately in each group? Well, we would have five tenths with some left over. Please remember to bring up your decimal point and keep that lined up. Now we're going to look at five times three, which is 15. And then let's look at the difference. When we take 15 from 16, we have one left over. And let's go ahead and do that check. Make sure that one is smaller than three. Yep, we can carry on. Let's go ahead and bring down our eight. And now we're looking at 18 hundredths. If we have 18 hundredths and we need to divide them into three equal groups, what will we have in each group? Six. Because six times three is 18. And 18 minus 18 is nothing. Final answer, 
is 13.56 kilograms. Cool. So if you uh, are needing a bit of a review, go back and look at one of the modeling problems. Please make sure one of these problems is in your math notebook. And please make sure that you march proudly into class on Thursday ready to practice uh, this amazing division. <laughs>